From today, groups of up to six people from different households are allowed to meet outdoors in Northern Ireland. It's a latest example, isn't it, of the widening gap between the lockdown rules of the four UK nations. And this comes as a group of cross-party MPs have written to the Prime Minister to stress the importance of England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland working closely together during the pandemic. Our political correspondent Chris Mason is in Westminster and has been looking through that letter. And there's a, a series of, of sort of clarifications wanted through that uh, through the text, Chris, aren't they? Yeah, morning to you, Dan. Here is uh, the letter, 19 pages. You only write a 19-page letter when you've got a lot to say. It comes from the Science and Technology Committee of Backbench MPs, chaired by a guy called Greg Clark, who was in the Cabinet uh, until last summer. A pretty mild-mannered kind of chap, doesn't usually shoot his mouth off, but plenty of criticisms in here around transparency or what's perceived to be a lack of it from government in publishing uh, scientific advice in a timely manner, as you say, calling for uh, the UK nations to work more closely together as you were just saying there, we're seeing divisions in terms of the direction uh, that different parts of uh, the country are going. And real criticism, Dan, on testing. Page 8 of this 19-page letter, testing capacity has been inadequate for most of the pandemic so far. Capacity was not increased early enough or boldly enough. Capacity drove strategy rather than strategy driving capacity. Well, as has been the case throughout this pandemic, the big decision makers, those at the top table, are coming on breakfast every day to justify their actions. And in response to this, we had the Cabinet Minister to raise coffee on the programme in the last half hour. I'm not saying that uh, it, with hindsight, could we have had more capacity at the start? Could we have done some other things differently? Uh, it's just that there is an element of how we get going in that, uh, as I say, from that standing start. And now basically anybody who's got symptoms can apply to get a test. Uh, and we have that widespread capacity around the country. Uh, and that's, uh, I think, something uh, on which from a standing start, Actually, the government can be somewhat proud, uh, but recognising that the next stages and that we've entered into that phase uh, is about tracking uh, elements of where this virus is. This uh, letter, Dan, also this morning, absolutely wallops Public Health England, one of the organisations that's been absolutely core to the government's response and the national response uh, within England publicly a very spiky response uh, from that agency this morning. It gives you some sense of the blame game that is already beginning to happen in public ahead of a likely public inquiry uh, when all of this is over. Uh, one last thought as well, Therese Coffey saying that uh, President Trump's remarks overnight, which we were reporting a few minutes ago, surprised a lot of people. That is what diplomacy sounds like. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. I think you're right on that. And many other things. Good to talk to you. Three minutes.